Hello and welcome to the very first Bangkok Chit Chat with Andrew and Andy. I'm Andy and this is uh, Andrew. <laughs> Must be really. <laughs> so welcome along and uh, thanks for, for taking the time out to, to view the show. Well, what are we? We've been, what, a year getting this together, I guess, from the early concept days? Uh, a, year, a year of discussing on the, on the back of a fag packet in, in, a, in a pub. Yeah? I, I think so. Uh, there was a few pub sessions where I sort of said to Andrew, this is what I fancy doing. And I didn't know he was building a studio and building up his business. and. And he, well, what did you say when I sort of told you this is what I'd like to do? That well, was actually fulfilling a dream for me as well. So uh, but the, we'd, we'd known each other for, oh, well, not far, but we'd, we'd met for each other uh, probably 20 years ago. Yeah, paths have crossed. Yeah, I can't remember. And the, ra that. the radio, yeah. radio station. Uh, yeah. We advertised the Business in Thailand magazine. Oh, back uh, in the day. So, yeah, that's where we met. And then we contacted and saw each other through different events and things. But when we were discussing at the pub, that was just a, uh, an idea that, we thought, well, let's give it a go. Yeah, because I, I do watch uh, a lot of YouTube stuff, like uh, especially on football side of things and, and cars, which uh, I, I like. Uh, I'm interested in that sort of thing. So I just thought one day, well, why can't we do that? You know, and just talk about Bangkok, whether you live here or live abroad. Hopefully, it's going to be interesting. Well, the whole concept is uh, is basically it's entertainment. Uh, so it's, it's chit chat. It's a uh, a bit like pub talk, but we're going to have business interviews and we'll have a just entertainment interviews. More, more entertainment probably, than business. You'll probably recognise some of the people that uh, that, that uh, we're, we're interviewing. But well, yes, it's, it's there to be informative as, as well. You know? Yeah, I mean, later on in the show, we've got an interview with somebody you probably do know. A lot of you will, so uh, we'll we'll tell you who he is later on. Okay, New Year. Well, we, it's now, of course, New Year is a thing of the past. We're well into 2019. But did oh, you have a good well into, but I mean, uh, well, okay. <laughs> well, we are. I mean, it's not, everyone's back to work. Yeah, uh, I think one of the things you see is, you know, people say, you know, after the first, in the UK, for example, people go back probably the, the third, yeah? Mm. Uh, but over here, because people are traveling maybe back home mm. in some cases, mm. really, they're talking about maybe the, the, the beginning of the following week which yeah. I think was the seventh and the Monday, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then and that's when my son went back to work. He works for a Thai company, actually, but it's yeah. small, and he had the whole week off. And then I think it was the seventh, yeah. Yeah, but people like, got all these emails uh, and uh, you know, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, which yeah. is lo lovely to get. Uh, we discussed this in a in a, in a, in a promo video about uh, Christmas cards and uh, what people do you use now. But yeah. uh, I think. People are just now getting back into uh, on the, 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 the second week of, of January, into the swing of things. We have the business. This is work. when all the companies have their meetings now, don't they? Yeah, you know a lot of companies have, have, their, have their weekends away and things yeah. like that as well, from now up to maybe March. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the corporate, the, the, yeah. the dinners, the getting awards their, ceremonies, and, and, and getting their like employees that. into line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then of course they're all the ones that came back got a decent bonus. Yeah. Well, I had, well, there's, there's an interesting topic bonuses because back in the day they were very regular. I mean, I my my wife works for for a big airline, uh, Thai International. She hasn't had a bonus for about five six years. Well, the banks used to pay up to six month bonus, and then when the crash came, yeah. it all dras drastically reduced. Yeah. And why why did they do that? Because basically they were limiting the risk. Mm. But there is a, something within labour law which says that if it's a continual uh, a process of always giving, let's say one month, one month, it becomes a legal commitment. But I, it's, it's like tipping in America, though. I think a bonus. People are forgetting what a bonus is. Bonus is if the company's doing well, and you've worked well, then here's a tip. It's a bonus. Mm. It's not. A mandatory is that the word it's yeah. not you know if a company isn't making money then don't expect a bonus uh, why should you have one I mean it may not be your fault that the company isn't doing well well that's the way you know so the staff look at it I mean yeah but you should you know it's the over and then again you've got the businesses that do do well but pretend that they're not and they don't give you a bonus mm. which is wrong but anyway did you have a good new year I had a great new year what time do you go to bed oh it must have been about 2 33 9.30. Nice. <laughs> in the evening. <laughs> Why didn't you bring in the new, the bit, see, oh, being Scottish. Yeah. Uh, Hogmanay, right? Well, it's Hog Hogmanay for us, but for for, being, for the Scot, it is probably more important, but in a different way. It's big, Christmas. isn't it? It's big time. Because it wasn't it? until the 70s mm. that Scotland actually made Christmas an annual holiday. 
New Year was always uh, an annual holiday in Scotland, but in the 70s, uh, they, they opened up Christmas as being a, a national holiday. Oh, oh so really? So you used to go to work on Christmas Day? Well, not in the 70s because I was too young. But uh, No, people did. I still had my paper run. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a bit like Thailand. I mean, it's a full working day here, isn't it? Yeah, and to be honest, I, lot I, I, I worked in most of Christmas Day. Uh, I, I, we actually had a, a barbecue on the 23rd uh, mm -hmm. with uh, our, some our, my, my girlfriend's friends and mm -hmm. a couple of mine. Uh, it was nothing big, quite, quite small, yeah, mm -hmm. but... Uh, is now going to become an annual affair, yeah. Mm. And uh, that was really our celebration with some with some friends. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then on Christmas Day, uh, I don't think we really did an awful lot, mm. but the, the we had some some uh, some nephews and things like coming around. Well, not everybody had a good uh, New Year. I feel sorry a bit for the uh, tourists that were stuck on the islands because uh, uh, twelve days ago or so, thirteen days ago, big storm, uh, storm Pabuk. Is that how you pronounce it, Jet? Pabuk, Pabuk. Uh, which you know hit Gol Samui, Gol Tao, Gol Pangna, eastern coast of Nakhon Si Tamarat. They say fifty thousand people. I say evacuated. I think that's a slight exaggeration. But they left. Well, they moved. They were moved into uh, schools, I believe. Uh, so I didn't people know right this. on the coast, right on the yeah. coast, they were moved into schools for for safety. Well, Jet, our um, producer and engineer here, you were delayed, weren't you? You can talk. Don't worry. You can say yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You were delayed. You weren't using it as an excuse to come back late. Because <laughs> <laughs> he did come back late, didn't he? No. Oh, he didn't? No, no, no. Oh, all, right. all, all, all on time. But it affected your holiday? Yes. Oh, ah, right. Well, sorry about that. Really am. What else happened? Now, this is interesting. Well, it's not that interesting, but I'm going to say it. Thai and foreign tourists fled for their lives. Typical. This is from the Bangkok Post and Nation. As a fire broke out on a pleasure cruiser in Bangkok's Chao Priya River last night. It says last night because it's a bit old now. Have you ever been on one of these dinner cruises? Uh, yes, but I think the, the the bigger bigger picture of this is it's just not good for the the Thai tourism because you've just had the accident in Phuket, mm. which basically tourism figures dropped. Yeah. yeah. So what we have to really look at is it is a proper checks being done. Well, the, yeah. the, the vertical cruise had left Asia Teak. Uh, when a kitchen worker, a kitchen worker noticed some smoke, not in the kitchen, no, in the engine room. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So it sails off down uh, and docks, and everyone gets off. It's okay. But I've been, I it's bad press, unfortunately. Yeah, my wife won a couple of tickets to go on one of them, and it had it was like a buffet. It was dreadful. It was horrible. The buffet was a typical, you know dishes of food with a little burner underneath and that, and you go to where they all go, turn, you go to, I think, uh, Wat Arun, I think mm. something, and then turn around and come back. But I do recommend one, and when I have family coming over, we make it a point of always going on it, because it's called Yok Yor, it's by a Yok Yor restaurant, and uh, they serve you the food while it's, while it's docked, but you, it goes underway when you're still eating the food, and there's a limited menu that they cook actually on board. Right. So, you know, because it's a two and a half hour, three hour trip, it gets a bit, not boring, but you know, you need some beers or mm. soft drinks or whatever. And there's food snacks keep coming, you know, mm. some whatever. So, Yok Yor, uh, their website is um, all the W's, Yok Yor, which is Y O K Y O R dot co dot th forward slash English if you want it in there. It's cheap. Uh, <laughs> you, you pay, a, I think, 200 baht for the boat. And then it's just like a Thai, because they have a restaurant anyway that you can right. sit at. So it's just like sitting in a Thai restaurant and paying the food you Never heard price of it. Cheap. Yep. Yeah, and then you get on there and it goes all the, yeah, and the boat is a big thing. And you can sit on the top deck if the weather's good. Mm. And most times we do, and it's right at the top, and it's lovely. And once it was raining and they moved us to sort of like a cabin area at the, uh, and it was really enjoyable as well, although it's better to be outside. It's so cheap because I looked at it, it was around about 2,800, 300 baht for uh, bars, but it was one of the junk boats, yeah. Oh no, the, the, uh, yeah, like a rice barge thing? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, some of the hotels have renovated those, uh, yeah. the map, what used to be called the Marriott. I think they're, I think they're called junk. The menorah, correct, the, the menorah, menorah. that rings a bell, the menorah. Anyway, yeah, now this is like a massive boat. And I mean, it, it just glides along the river. You don't have to worry about seasickness or anything. Anyway, that was my recommendation. I thought worth mentioning. 
Uh, so their holiday was not, <laughs> didn't go quite according to plan. Yes, yeah, that's uh, all I'm saying. So because of as well. Yeah, yeah. No, we Mr. Flakes. Somebody living in a housing estate, uh, <laughs> a, a suspected burglar preying on a Chambery housing estate, stole nothing because he was disturbed. He probably disturbed anyway for doing it in the first place. But, but he left a souvenir for one woman at a block of flats, a poo that she had to clear up herself. Uh, she scared him off and called the police, but before he ran off, he did his dreaded deed. He probably shot himself. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, why do they do well, that? I've read that before somewhere, but they, I think they're, they're just so pissed off that they couldn't get what they wanted. Well, well I'm going to... Yeah, what goes through their mind? Used to have that back in the uh, UK. People would break in and, and they, would, they would trash a place. And it was teenagers and pee all over it or something. Yeah, yeah I know. It was, it was just, but you know, one thing it's to be aware of on these holidays, yeah, and I'm sure everybody is aware of this, uh, is is the prime time for break-ins because they know that people are going to be out. Well, so this is yeah. security yeah. in England for football. As houses yeah. are when when say someone's playing away, like Manchester United are playing away. <laughs> they go to the strikers or one of the team players' houses and burgles it because they know Stephen Gerrard got done for that. Right. And uh, Wayne Rooney got done. They knew he was away and they burgled his house. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a dangerous time in these, in these, in these holidays. Yeah. So yeah. basically, security lights, what we've got as all security lights, so if they come in the vicinity in the yeah. path, the, the lights go on, it'll scare them off. It's all to do with deterrent. Yeah. Well, this is Bangkok Chit Chat and we would love you to subscribe because, well, first of all, it's the first one, early stages, and we need a hundred to list ourselves on YouTube. So that's our first goal, really. It's, I think it's fairly achievable. Oh, no, it, it, it will be done. Yeah, yeah, it will. For, for, no, there's, there's, there's not an issue uh, with that. So yeah. please hit that subscribe button and like it. And if you can share it, especially at this stage, it would just help us get off and running because this is our passion, this is what we want to do, and we'll keep on doing it. But yeah, it just puts a nice little colour on it if you know you're sort of, not very popular, but some people like what you're doing, then it makes makes it just a little bit nicer to do. Yeah, and we'll be releasing uh, new, new shows every two weeks, uh, so if you subscribe, you'll get a notification of it. And there'll be other topics that we're actually discussing within the chit chat, no, not just the, the, the interviews and business, and, and what's on, mm. but other topics we'll be discussing, which we'd encourage you to actually message through and uh, engage with this, because this is more of a, a community event. Yeah, if you want to write else. to us, how can they do that? Because we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube. Yeah, so how can Facebook people get in Messenger? touch with you and me? Facebook Messenger is probably the, the easiest. Yeah. Is that gonna come up after the video? Yes, we'll, we'll give you all the, at the end of the video, you'll have a, a, a list of all the communication points. Okay. So, uh, and, What's the what's the we'll, we'll remind you of what to do and how to do it mm. uh, at the end of each each show, yeah. so so you're aware. But yeah, give your ideas. If there's any particular topics you would like to be dis uh, like to discuss, we will go out on uh, location a few times sometimes as well if it's yeah. the right yeah. thing to Just do. Pl please let us know. Yeah. Right. Uh, we're taking a short break and we're back with uh, what's on on Bangkok Chit Chat. You're back with Bangkok Chit Chat with Andrew and Andy, and uh, what's on? Well, I've only got a couple here, and they may not appeal to everybody. Uh, Three-time Grammy Award-winning multi-platinum band. Sounds good, doesn't it? Been here two times already. Maroon 5. Mm. <laughs> anyway, they're here on their red pill. That just shows your age. <laughs> no, I used to play them regularly on radio. I actually like them, I can't. Yeah. I like their song. Uh, moves like Jagger, da da da, da Jagger. Yeah. Mm. You, know, you don't know that one, do you? No, I do know it. Do, do you? I just didn't recognise you singing it. it, that's all. Oh, I do yeah. sing it. No, 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 I can't sing. <laughs> I wouldn't even attempt it. Well, their show's on the 9th of March uh, at Impact Challenger Hall, Mung Tong Tani, price of tickets. Uh, start at 3,000 baht. Uh, well, compared to, uh, I used to think, sorry, I used to, uh, I went to a couple of concerts, but you compare it back to the UK, you had to know about 100 quid. What concerts were they? Were they, um, oh, like, I went um, to see Frank Sinatra. Sting, Sting, no, no, I mean, see this, this really just dictates <laughs> your age, but uh, no, I went to see Sting. Yeah, oh, brilliant. Right? Uh, so. Uh, that was that was probably around about. But you can't be more, yeah. Da, 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 da. 
in the fields of valley. <laughs> yeah, well, he actually, you can actually Exist- understand the words when he sang it. I don't know, but uh, okay. I focus on lyrics <laughs> on songs. I always go, uh, I go, you know, over the bridge, na 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 na. <laughs> so, Ed Sheeran, Divide World Tour coming 28th of April. Now, hang on, these tickets, it may have sold out already because we've done this a sort of couple of weeks uh, b- uh, prior to uh, the showing of the of the show. So, anyway, he's coming. Tickets are now. How, look at that. Tickets start at two thousand baht, but they probably go way up to six thousand. Yeah, but there's only thousand. one of Ed Sheeran. <laughs> I, I'm not an Ed Sheeran fan. I have to admit, my my wife is. My, I don't know anyone that isn't. I'm not sure. I'd probably take a cushion with me. I might fall asleep when I'm watching it. Well, I but know. He's, he is a very, he's a fantastic a artist. guy, of course, yeah. of course. Anyway, and he's a redhead, so the, that's all the fashion now, isn't it? Yeah, is it? It is. Yeah, all the redheads. We what natural Harry, or dark? Harry. Well, natural, yeah, natural. Oh, so well, Scotsmen yeah. are red, aren't they? Yeah, but sort of Vikings. So <laughs> <laughs> they're blonde. Well, do you know something? Yeah, I've never seen you know, a redhead red early, Viking. Earlier on, we were talking about uh, the, the the January uh, New Year, yeah. and there's a certain uh, c- ceremony process, whatever you want to call it, where uh, on New Year, the first person to walk into your house, yeah, it has to be someone with black hair, because the person in the house, right, comes to the front door and ch- and opens the door to see if they're blonde or redhead, and it all comes from the Viking days. So if they had black hair, they wouldn't be allowed well, in. No, there was a black hair. They brought a bottle of whiskey and a bit of coal. Yeah, which represents. I know represented the coal thing. Yeah, the coal to keep the house house warm. Oh, right. and whiskey is as, as a warm side yeah? wall. And that was yeah. called first footing. Yeah, I don't think it's really done anymore. But when saying a red head, so if Prince Harry comes to my door. He said, "Oh no!" You go slam on his face. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> being a red hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so Ed's here. Bless his little cotton socks. Uh, he's uh, here. Uh, what day? Whatever I said, I can't see that. Twenty uh, eighth of April and you can get your tickets at Thai Ticket Major. And another one here I've just thrown in, it's on the 1st and 2nd of February at the Thai Cultural Centre, Jesus Christ, Superstar. Yeah, okay. Right. You know that one, right? You just sang these words, I wasn't even to tune to it, but... Uh, no, okay. no, 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 but it's Jesus Christ, so you know that, right? Yeah, that was... That was uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber. Yes, it's been around for, what, 70s it came out? As long as hair's been around. Right, okay. Not red hair or white hair, no, I mean hair, the musical. Right. Right. Okay, all right. Okay. God, didn't that rock the world when hair yeah. came out? I can't remember. They're all nude that. right on there, it was one of the first, there were nude... That, uh, so nobody pieces. actually went to see the show. <laughs> the show. Once you couldn't see many bits because it was they're all covered in hair. Anyway, tickets are eight hundred baht to three thousand baht to go and see Jesus Christ Superstar. If that's your thing, right? What have we got? Restaurants. Now this is from BK Magazine. Saucy. I I only picked it because of the name of the restaurant. Saucy Chicken and Beer Bomb Restaurant. And what okay. it does is it actually has chicken drenched in six saucy flavors. Now I love that sort of thing. You've got your chili paste garlic shrimp oil, which is the original. You've got soy sauce, palm sugar, African teriyaki, which is wild honey and aged ginger. Isan jiao, which if you have uh, in the street, you have chicken and namjim jiao, right. which is that beautiful uh, sauce. It's nampla, fish sauce in there inside. It's beautiful. Anyway, they call that, what do they call that? The da 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 That's anyway, whatever. And you've got Korean chili paste or barbecue hot tomato paste sauce. Anyway, it looks really nice. They've got a terrace. They do... Um, it's where like is a, it? Uh, where is it? It's on Saturn Soy 8. Right. Okay. And you can catch up with them on uh, www.facebook.com forward slash Saucy Bangkok. What they do is vodka slushes and happy hour beers by two, get one free. All right. Which on with your chicken, yeah? Yeah, with, well, you don't, probably, you don't have to have the chicken. You probably can go there. Mind you, vodka slushes. They don't take, you know, if you have a shot of vodka or so, you know you're drinking alcohol with a slushy, I imagine, apart from the brain freeze that you might get, mm. they must go down lovely. And then, okay. you know, you've never had one. <laughs> I have in the past, at some, some, some point, I can't really of remember. Course. And their, their, their theme is like beachy, turquoisey, palm fringe terrace. Okay. Uh, with wicker. It looks quite nice. And you were at a place the other day. Yeah, just before, before we, we brought in the bells, yep, uh, we went to No Idea Gastropub on Sukhumvit Soy 22 and we had a meal and it was fantastic. Uh, I, I, I recommend it to all my friends. Uh, run by Dave, mm-hmm. Dave Hallam. And what's it, his, where does he come from? What nation? New Zealand. It is, so it's a, it's, a, it's a New Zealand style sort of gastropub. But the food is excellent. 
Uh, Good price though, because my son mentioned it the other day. He said, "Yeah, the price well, some, some people have. They're not paying this for this, by the way. This is just what we like." Yeah. yeah. Uh, some people have said, "Oh, it's quite expensive," but you know, if if you want to go to get quality food, you're gonna you're gonna pay for it. But it, actually, I would actually call it cheap. Yeah. Um, so I mean, if you went to Antara or or oh, somewhere, well, like, hotels, you're gonna pay. Yeah. But uh, but but it's, it, I, I think it's uh, it's it's certainly value for money. We've got a fantastic. Uh, a range of wines, yeah, mm. uh, and we have we got. Are you a wine drinker? Not really. Uh, you appreciate but my a girlfriend good is, and uh, she mm. she had she was recommended a wine. She she turned around and said, "Well, what was that? I don't know." I wasn't too expensive. Was I mean, no, I mean, a, a good bottle, a nice bottle of wine for me. If you go to sort of say like the Fat Cow or other restaurants, nine hundred to a thousand baht. I think is a reasonable price if the wine is okay. Yeah, People might say, "Oh, that's too cheap, Andy. You can't get a good bottle okay, of wine all, for that." It all comes down to what, what, which wine it is. Yeah. yeah and yeah. of course, you've got, if you've got a range, you, you, you can you can speak to one of the staff. They're very knowledgeable and they can recommend what uh, against what what you're eating mm. to complement the food. Yeah. Right. Uh, so yeah. Right. Anyway, right. Uh, and that's, that's where we went, and we we thoroughly enjoyed the the evening. All right. So there we are. I well, you can, when are you going to take me for my birthday? Uh, is it, well, I better take it quick because you've had quite a few birthdays already. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't know how many more I got, right? Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I tell you what, we forgot to do New Year's resolutions. Uh, did you make any? Uh, no, I didn't, uh, and the reason because is because I keep, cause I keep, I keep making them and, and, and not always, fulfilling them. Yeah, but one thing yeah. I am going to do is uh, lose more weight, as I think anyone, uh, anyone out of our age group keep, keeps saying, middle east, mm. middle east spread. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I will lose weight, and I've already lost uh, three kilos. Good lad. So uh, how are you doing that? Just basically more exercise activity, uh, mm. just doing more things instead of getting in a taxi, walking. Uh, instead of going up the escalator, going up the stairs. Yeah, the sudden, it's the all simple yeah, things. Just, I'm yeah. not a, a Jimmy kind of person, if pardon the pun being Scottish. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, hey, uh, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, just basically being being more active and also watching watching what I'm eating. I'm one of these people. If you put the food in front of me, I'll eat it. If you give me stodge, I'll eat it. So give you, me healthy food, I'll eat it. But just don't tell me it's healthy. I thought you were on a seafood diet. When you see food, you eat it. <laughs> <laughs> That's an old one, sorry, yeah. sorry. Um, this is a, a good thing I saw on Twitter from Siddharth Singh at Siddharth 3. He suggests that this is a startup idea, a gym named resolution that runs for the first month of the year. Collect all the subscription fees, then convert it into a bar named Regret. No, I think that makes to total sense, total sense. And one other one is uh, my New Year's resolution. This comes from Petra Hitchens at Flying Kepper. Flying Kipper, I thought that was. And my New Year's resolution is simply to remember to write 2019 instead of 2018. So, there we go. Anyway, good luck on your New Year's resolutions. Uh, we've got an interview with Paul Jackson, who's more or less done everything a man could do here in Thailand. That's coming up next. Keep it here on Bangkok Chit Chat. <laughs> Hi, you're watching Bangkok Chit Chat with Andrew and Andy, and our guest today, well, let me just go through his resume. Uh, he's a club DJ, radi was, uh, radio presenter, radio music programmer, record store owner, BMG Records managing director, mobile disco entertainment guy, uh, club manager, club owner, I go do, 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 internet franchise owner, mainly with Anglo Info, and a lot more. Welcome, Paul Jackson. You left out a bit of there. What have I left out? No, fish this is for things like later on. Chip shop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Paul Jackson, welcome. Thank you. Um, when did you come to Thailand? How long? How long have you been? October here? 1982. So I reckon that's about 36 years. 36, 37 years. Yeah, 36. Not counting 2019. So 36 years. All right. A bit so of a shocker. <laughs> the first question, really, how's Thailand changed? And more importantly, maybe, how have you changed over that I've time? I've got old. Uh, yeah. uh, Thailand's changed. Oh, yeah. Same old, same old. The roads are better. Yeah. Still congested. Yeah. But public transport is much better. You know, the shopping malls are better. In 82, there was not a lot around. No. Roads that you take for granted now, like 
Rajana Pisek or Rama 9, you, back in the day when we used to get our work permit from Rama 9 area, yeah. it's basically going through a swamp. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. Is, this didn't exist. So all these highways and expressways, right. tollways, right. not virtually there. nothing. That was yeah. my wife dropping stuff. Yeah, I hope the right. phone's okay, Kung yeah. <laughs> uh, It's changed a yeah. lot, basically. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it's a modern industrial city now, if that's the right word. Well, you're missing out. City. Something also is communication has progressed. I mean, yeah. when we, we first came here, no computers. Well, well, the only one airport, Don Juan, which used to take you three hours to get to. True, true yeah. which was really handy because I lived next door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It took me five minutes to get to. And, you know, phoning back to back home to the UK, yeah. you know, it was okay off from a landline, but it was mm. a whatever, two pounds a minute, 80 yeah. baht, whatever yeah. the current yeah. currency was back then. It cost you a fortune uh, to get a, a landline, it's something like that, that oh, too, a huge yeah. amount. Yeah. Well, when I, when I first moved to my house, and you'll remember this, for one year, or more, I think it was more 18 months, I didn't have a phone. There yeah. was no lines and no mobile. No, I remember. I that. wonder how I, wouldn't that have been Wasn't lovely? it great, no one bothered <laughs> me. Oh, perfect it was, world. Perfect it was my world. excuse for not calling him, is, yeah. but it worked. You know, <laughs> now I don't have any, unfortunately. But uh, no, it's true, uh, mobiles and things like that came along and we all had our first Motorola here. Yes, um, the brick. The, oh, the brick and everything yes. else. And yeah. everything. Well, that was fun though. Got an arm and an egg and the back. 67,000 bar was cut. I got it from PT Electronics at Lad Prow Plaza at the central. There. You consider 67,000 bar now would be yeah. what, 140 or something yeah. by today's oh, money. Yeah. Yeah. But it was great when you go stroll along to the pub and you just put your phone. Poser, you used to put your phone down. Trouble is, everyone know. was doing it, so there'd be four tables with them all there. Thing is, you're phoning each other because you're the only ones with the phone. Basically. No, I never got in quite into the that. Pagers, you got the pagers as well. Oh, yeah. we had those. And then yeah. using that to phone people back. You know, Voice over jobs were always paid, weren't they? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Quite wild, yeah. that. You know, mm. Where's it all gone? I mean, you think no email, you know, now you just get online. 30 years, so that's all. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah, it's no. not a long when you time. Consider, 36 when you consider the, 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 the smartphones of today and all of those, you know, non existent things back then, it was like, my goodness, how did we get along? Mm. But was it as. Was it better than now, or is no, now better? No, I mean, it's hard. That's a hard question. Te not telexes. That's a little bit before my time here. But yeah. faxes, you know, we still cost sending a, a, a five-page fax back to the UK. That would have cost. Of course, you had the faxes, quid, didn't, didn't you? Yeah. Facsimile. Facsimile. Yeah. Oh, right. So and when you still ask me nowadays, can you send a fax? I say, oh, not uh, not really. To be honest. No, no. <laughs> it's dinosaur. dinosaur. Like, yeah, I'd basically just tell you, I'll, I'll scan something. I'll send it to you. Yeah, by and by email. Yeah. There's a bit, a bit of whirring going around in their heads as they're trying to figure out what you're saying. But I think it's also the, the change in Thailand and the, and the legality. A fax is classed as a legal document, whereas an email uh, is not or was not. I'm not sure if it is now or not. It is if you're using like, a, like Adobe Sign, things like that. Yes, in, in digital UK, signature. That's a, a digital but signature is a legal document. I'm not sure that's here yet. Uh, it, is, it is here. I mean here, but whether it's considered legal if you had to go to oh, court right, yeah, with yeah, it, yeah, as it yeah, were. Yeah, yeah. You know. I read somewhere, and this is when faxes were the thing, that don't take them, they won't last forever, they fade or something. Okay, yeah. Is that you right? Take, you have to take a photocopy of them. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I've got a trendier fax machine that just used A4 normal paper later on, you know, like a Mark II fax machine. All <laughs> oh, right. Um, but you know, that's just the way the progression of fax machines went, yeah. as opposed to the, the, the thermal printing, as yeah. it were. But, yeah. oh, that's interesting. This, mm. So you came here, how old were you when you came here? 22. Good. Close to twenty one. Do the math. Yeah, yeah really. It's twenty one. I was thirty. But I'm yeah, the yeah. oldest here. I know, yeah, yeah. Well yeah. oh, that's yeah, that's evident. That's why yeah. it's my show. <laughs> <laughs> At least the Zimmer frame is parked over there I and mean, it's still <laughs> safe, don't we? We'll, you know. So you came here twenty two? <coughs> twenty two, yeah, with that kind of curly hair and stuff like that. Yeah. You had hair then? I had hair and it was permed. So it was quite interesting. And what was your, and what was your, what <laughs> were you doing? Back then. Yeah. What, what were you doing, and where was it? That was uh, I was working for a, a, a London agency called Giuliano's slash Backers because they merged yeah. at some point. They were like an entertainment agency. Send DJs around the world. Yeah, so. like you worked for yeah. one, but a smaller one in Norway, right? Yeah. But um, well, we were international, but we weren't. Yeah, you had the bells and whistles. They flew you places. Yeah, the records. Yeah, I had to carry all my records yeah, around with yeah, me. Yeah. You got be better pay. We which did. Is very we did. strange. We yeah. just had better hotels. Yeah, well, because we were better DJs. Yeah, it was rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, where was it? Sorry. Around Norway initially, but when I arrived yeah. and, and a few other places in the world, and then I came to um, the Dusitani in Bangkok in Bubbles Disco, which <laughs> is the, where I think I was the th maybe the second uh, Farang DJ to work there or something mm -hmm. like that. 
That was a three-month contract. Hotel Disco. Yeah, it was the place in Bangkok at the time. Yes. And I think there was, it was the only one. Frequented by royalty from time to time. From time to time, yeah, let's mm. not go that way. Mm. Um, mostly actors, actresses and rich Thai people. Drinks in 1982 were 500 baht in that club. So, and it was packed Monday to Sunday. Boof, you couldn't get in after 9.30. It was an absolute... Well, you seem to like these, mega spot. these sort of um, exotic, high-end yeah. discos because you moved from there to the Oriental Hotel. I mean, yeah. that was a step up. Yeah, but that was on almost, uh, oh, I think they extended my contract seven, eight, nine times until I, I ended up going. To the Oriental. Um, yeah, I was there for th nearly three years at the Dusitani. Yeah. And then, you know, this other mega club at the Oriental Hotel in the Plaza building mm. next door called Diana's was, you know, doing also great guns and they just basically paid me more and more and more to go there and work there. So I went there for a couple of years. I mean, may I put in, at this time, every hotel, in, even then, including out my way, Rama Gardens Hotel, had a disco yeah. oh, with a Falang, yeah. uh, an yeah. English, nine out of ten times English, Pretty DJs right. at them. At that one right. time, I think we counted when we had a get-together. Yeah. Well, Sunday nights. Almost 20-odd, yeah. 20 25. Yeah, it was 20, uh, 20, between 20 and 25 DJs, yeah. all yeah. working. Yeah. Airport hotel yeah, even had then. a DJ. But what about the attenders? Was that aimed at the tourists or was it aimed at the local? Oh, no. for, those, for those other hotels, anybody basically. By that time, you know, discos were trendy, so only the rich still went to diners and bubbles. But those yeah. are more accessible. Like your club is. Well, yeah, I mean, drink, right? there, there was a, sh <laughs> there was, a, it was, there was uh, two drinks at two hundred bar. There we go. <laughs> I used to um, go there because it was cheap. But, well, th there was a <laughs> shift <laughs> in in DJs. Big because pun. A shift. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's the like was having a go then? Yeah. Dodgy sushi. I, had I thought you said they were the shit DJs. Well, apart from that, but yeah. <laughs> well, there were some pretty bad ones. I must admit, the ones that were Mickey on the Mo run. No, what was his name? That was one guy. That Mickey Mo. I can't remember. There was all the dregs over here at one point. Sounds yeah. like a wrestler. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Mickey Most wasn't he the record label guy? Mickey Most. Uh, you're right. Yeah, from Rack Records. Yeah. There we go. See, noses. Because well, I'm looking through all the jobs you had. Nice ones. Those happens with that. Oh really? Yeah. You, you've all been connected with music. But there was a shift in discos, like he did the typical hotel disco. You could have been in Diana's or Bubbles, or you could have been in Dubai, you could have been in wherever, wherever, mm. wherever, because they were there as, as entertainment for the guests that were staying, and then at weekends the locals would join in. Well, yeah, sort of there weren't thing. many hotel, hotel guests that would go down, not many no. to my remembering. Oh. It's just too expensive. For How's it changed then? How's it changed from, from then to now? First of all, not disco. My, my, my daughter turned around to me and said, I said, do you go to disco? I said, dad, well, they're not called disco. No, yeah. yeah. Do you go to the club? Yeah, basically. Uh, the club? What club are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's you, all club. No, you chill out down the clubs and pick up on some how's, vibes. How's it changed? I mean, obviously the type of music has changed. Yeah, quite. Uh, but, but what I see when I go to, uh, well, I don't go to clubs as such, but uh, clubs is more sort of techno music, etc. But But also there's a, a revival of all the music from the 80s and 90s. Oh, yeah. Sadly, you're not going to hear that in Thailand ever, unfortunately, unless I'm doing it. Basically. 80s, 90s? No, yeah. no one. Oh, you're, no, no, my son, really? my son will at our barbecues, but That's he's not the same. No, he's very good at getting the older ones. Even you'll hear, you'll, you'll hear yeah, stuff. Very, very rarely. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. No. there are, there's probably a thousand little clubs in Bangkok now, and none of them have got what I would call professional DJs, which is a sad thing to yeah, say. I know. They're just bedroom DJs that learn how to put two records together that Mix. are basically house house music, yeah. and they come and go ten a penny, and their cheapest chips to hire. That's in the, our days, it's it very was, rare to find it a, was vinyl, an entertaining yeah. DJ. It was yeah, 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 yeah. For, the, for the average, per, and for me, a DJ, uh, and you'll be horrified with what I say. A DJ, is somebody puts on records and says a few words in between. Yeah, yeah well, that's what but, they used to do. Right, uh, but yeah. so how is it different now? They don't see any words in between. No. They just, they just no. put on they a record. They yeah. Yeah. Uh, they'll put a record on. They press a button. Press a button. Yeah. They create a playlist basically. They'll yeah. mix the song in, in a professional manner because yeah. it still takes a but bit a lot of skill, the equipment. But there's no them. voice skills or any kind of interaction with the crowd. That's yeah. just done purely by the music. Um, right. They so wouldn't have. The, they wouldn't have the skill to pick up a mic, look at the crowd, and entertain them. They would not. They would not have that. Skill. And they don't even have right. to really if I'm wrong to tell me but the music now is if you're going to dip a club that's renowned for Deep House or something like that they have much it's easier for them to pick the right music for that place whereas mm. we would have we used to have you know records marked floor filler da, 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 and my horrible nightmare was dreaming in the night 
I lose the floor. Well, that's every day. Which is a nightmare, of course. It's, it's every, or an arrangement of senses. You lose the floor, what do you mean? People, people, people just walk off. Playing a rubbish song. Oh, right. You see, and that's, a, that's flop sweat and everything. Yeah, but nowadays, the, the music, I think, is there's much more of it. And yeah. I think people, as long as it's deep house, they'll go along with it. To be fair, also, it's the same. But I'll be shot down in flames if there's any deep, good DJs, this thing, but, you know. Um, well, my, my son's watching this, so <coughs> he's he, he's he's very good at taking music out of the nineties, eighties, but the remixed that's, ones. That's, a, remixed. that's your son. Yeah. yeah. Barbecue. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know, a bar in the, Bangkok. The, no, as a job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the crowd are not there. Well, okay. So that moves on nicely to the sort of radio was happening, early days of radio. You were here for that. Um, you started in one oh seven. One oh seven back in the day uh, was uh, jazz music in the daytime. Not uh, live in Monday. No, it was taped initially. Yeah. We had to send these reel-to-reel -reel tapes to M O N C O T, which were sent by motorcycle every four hours. Um, but we record an hour at a time because that was the only technology that was available to us, right? And uh, it was in Siam Square, the studio. That's where yeah. we used to. Blank. That's where I introduced you into it. You yeah, know, Blank, Blank International. Yeah. So it was jazz in the Monday to Friday, and then rock on the weekend. So I I didn't fancy the jazz, so I just did weekends. Just like a four-hour show for Saturday and Sunday, introduced me into radio. But, mm. um, but it was taped, so we've made a mistake. We stopped the tape and do it again. So you'd have messengers going off once the hour tape had been. Well, no, they do like about five hours at a time or something. And then wicket off messenger to the it would probably be the same way messengers send everything in Thailand still now, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then that would go to MCOT in Rama Nai, mm. and that would be put on, and that would be it. And the next day it would be on air. Mm. Um, so that was up until my goodness. Well, I, uh, um, I don't think they went live. The first live station was when we went on in, in uh, August. Was it August? Or no, August? December 82, uh, uh, 80, 86, 87. 86, 86, 87. It was 86. Medium I think punch. it was about November. Yeah, that was the first time yeah. radio went live in time. Yeah, let's move on to that. 95.5, yeah. which I, he got me on it. I've mm -hmm. never done it before. I used to have someone that used to for the first two or three shows would put the needle on the record for me. Put the needle, because my hands were shaking too much. I really? couldn't do it. I was so nervous. Was that DTs or was it well, uh, just no, it wasn't to be DT, I wasn't <laughs> used to drink much those days. Anyway, <coughs> you used to have to hold the record, you see, because it was all vinyl. So it's probably it, me putting it on there for you to be fair. Oh, I thought I the remember reason I couldn't you do put it. something on a needle was if I, if I had a scratch, you put a penny or a ten. Oh, I've put, on, put on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> these were actually that's that that's the, you know, the home the home turntables of yeah. the day, but. They actually had, I can't remember the name because they're so obsolete now, but they were actually the same turntables that Capital Radio and Radio Not One used. Techniques. No, no, no. It wasn't you mean name. the one with the very... It wasn't uh, the name that we would ever see it in, oh, in right. the high street. They had the actual same equipment as Capital and Radio One, the absolute dogs, bees, if you yeah. like, of turntables and these things. Instant style. Yeah, drive, they were amazingly, drive. amazing okay. turntables. So they, you wouldn't have to put anything like that on. Yeah. I'm glad that his rule of TV is yeah. always turn yeah. your phone yeah. off which we, we two did which we two professionals did and do you know what's worse yeah, he's ahead. reading the message on yes yeah, so I, I know so those turntables yeah. yeah you wouldn't have to weigh the uh, thing down yeah they would be so 95.5 was the first live radio because oh, I yeah. remember and the euphoria behind it with the DJs was great we could give traffic reports yeah. which is something you could never do <laughs> on never change radio there, like 30 years later they're still the same same roads are blocked and it's all nonsense well, what's that long word that we could always have chong chong chatter what a knee barrom barrom rom and the chatter chonny can we get help we didn't have it back in the day the road didn't exist but Baromani, whatever, you know. And you was the traffic report come in, and you first thing you'd look at is that word yeah. on there, you know, or oh, Mr. Hour, anyway. But it was all nonsense because every road was yeah. congested, but, but it, it was, was sponsored, so it was sponsored. Yeah, it was done. So, yeah. But even giving the weather out, that didn't change much as well. But yeah. it was nice to be live. Hot outside. Mm. When you've been recorded all your so life. So it's actually changed now. I mean, now what I see is there's, there's no. There's no English radio. Not it's since that six so they years speak now. English because you when they do speak English at times. On you, times, yeah. You, they, you can hear the the uh, so Americanized accent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but there's nothing in English. So English, which is I think is quite sad because very sad. The, for two reasons. One is, well, ma the main reason is that for Thais to practice their listening mm. of English. Yeah. yeah, that came uh, into it a lot, didn't it? We used to get those people that I like to listen, you know, yeah, improve it's, my it's English. And, and this is Thailand now for Southeast Asia is classed as a lower English uh, language mm. uh, yeah. ability in Cambodia and Vietnam. Really? Mm. Yes, it so is. So yeah. it is, it is, it is it's falling back. Now, now, this is not saying that, oh, these Falang are saying you should learn English. No, it's totally up to, we should learn Thai. 
We should be. Right. Oh no, it's not that. It's not. But it's more uh, when you see that. It's, oh, it's a bit, little bit disappointing. But but the, from the radio side, the exposure to that is not there. It's still in the movies, obviously the theatre. Mm, true. But I always find that the listening. When you look at a picture, you can also lip read. You can, listening is you have to have more focus on that. Maybe they've taken it off because m people have more crashes if they have to focus on the English rather than on the driving. Um, I don't know. I don't think it would affect the seven no. deadly days at all, do we? No. <laughs> but, but <laughs> I mean, after we started, the, <laughs> after 95.5 started and running, about, I don't know how long afterwards, there was 105. Two years. Yeah, smooth, uh, two years, smooth yeah. 105. So that's two English stations for a start. And then 107. And there was, and there was yeah. one more, wasn't there? Wasn't there one no, more? No, there was three. Oh, so three, three stations dedicated. Yeah, ninety-five point five CHR commercial hit radio, uh, mm -hmm. Evergreens, and all that slow stuff on the smooth one hundred and five. And one hundred and seven was. Uh, well, they went through a few different formats. Yeah, they? And they went through an oldies, and then they went through a top forty, and now they're back mm -hmm. to the top. Well, now they're back to the top anything. Well, I listen to one hundred and seven now. It's, well, it's the only it's the only one that listens to. Well, well there's one hundred and five point five. Yeah, which my wife listens to. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's a Thai market station. Ninety-five point five yeah. is still there. Is and Thai music, but it's still up in the it's top Virgin, three. Now. It's Virgin. Yeah. Virgin. Not anymore. Is Virgin here at all now? No. Because I mean, I've got so many questions. I think we're going to have to do a part two on this interview because I've got so many more things to ask Paul and this one is very interesting so let's stay with it for a moment. If you'd like to see the extended version of our chat with Paul Jackson then you'll find it on our YouTube channel which is called Chit Chat. I uh, would also like to hear your comments on the show and you can do that via Facebook Messenger or YouTube itself and please do us a massive favour and subscribe to our YouTube channel Chit Chat. A clickable link is at the end of the video and also like our Facebook page that's called Chit Chat Now. That's it for now, though, and we'll see you on our next show, which is on the 30th of January. See you then.